Hello, YouTube. I still exist and am part of the channel. Today, we're going to talk about some cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Some of the lesser known commander cards and obviously some stuff that might be on your radar. It's a commander video. We're going through Neon Dynasty. The video starts right now. Highest level of gratitude to our patrons who power the channel through Patreon. Check out the Patreon link in the description to learn about monthly giveaways, VIP Discord access, and even our official playmat. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We're going to get into our Neon Dynasty commanders. Sleepers and slappers, or budget and bling, or the big stuff and the small stuff. You know what we're talking about. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Dragon Shield. Shop at Dragon Shield using the link down in the description below, and you will be directly supporting our channel. Jake, are you ready to jump into these cards? The way that you can find the description of the video is to scroll down just a smidge, and then you'll be able to read the words below. Uh, use your eyes. Let's get into the cards. So first up, Jake, we have got a creature here with quite a few types in the type line. Enchantment, creature, human, citizen, and it's an uncommon to boot. That's right. If you get infinite mana going, which is easy, you know, cards like Ashnod's Altar, Phyrexian Altar come to mind. Uh, big Aristocrats piece here and lots of velocity on this card. Um, yeah, uncommon. But this is the kind of card that's going to get the job done. For one black, you're getting a 1-2, so that toughness is actually really notable on this card as well. I like that you don't have to tap it. Like you said, once you've got the mana, if you've got artifacts or creatures to sack, you're just going to be able to use this as many times as you have resources to do the thing. I love too, Jake, that sack an artifact, treasure tokens, food tokens, clue tokens. Baby, turn those, turn those food tokens into draw a card. I already like that. I'm already on board and, and it's a one mana card. Yeah, I'm super into this. This is just redundancy. This is an excellent, excellent sack outlet. And I'm sure that the foils on this are going to have a little bit more of a premium than other run of the mill foils in the set. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool art too. Lots of cool art in this set that I really liked. Banishing Slash is up next. This is a two mana removal spell and that's really the only way I'm interested in looking at it. Yell at me in the comments if you hate this card because it's sorcery speed. But look, two white mana to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. So we're already good. We got a disenchant that's sorcery speed. Hooray. Or a tapped creature. Wish that it could be instant speed, obviously. But removal for two mana at uncommon, affordable removal, destroying tapped creatures, artifacts, enchantments. Classic case of versatility right here. Just a nice suite of removal on this two mana spell. I love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. I love living here in the sleepers realm, Jake, at, at, at least at first, because... Yeah, people are, are going to be like, what, is this just a video about uncommons? No. I mean, and we have there another are some one slappers. here. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We do have uh, Tempered in Solitude. Now, one red, one other for an enchantment. If you know anything about me, you know that I love enchantments. Uh, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, and that is going to be on the attack. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn, whether it's a land, a spell. You could just throw a 01, you know, some token. If you're just trying to get a little bit more off the top of your deck, maybe you don't have exactly what you're looking for in the hand. We're talking about uncommons that right now are in a brand new set, right? So these foils are going to be easy to get now. And later on, as this set is out of sight, out of mind, I could see some of these foils starting to creep up in price, just if you are in the uh, looking to spec a couple little cards here. I love that it triggers on the attack. It doesn't have to get through. It doesn't have to deal combat damage or anything. All it needs to do is an attack. So just throw your little token, get a nice little impulse draw, repeatable passive. It's a cheap enchantment to play onto the field. I really like this as a sleeper pick for commander from this set. Jake, containment construct, I think, has had a medium amount of attention. Lots of people hyped over it. Lots of people still not aware it exists. But look at this, whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. And if you do, you may play that card this turn. Normal timing rules are gonna apply. You can't cycle a land on an opponent's turn and play that land. But the fact that this interacts with cycling, the fact that this interacts with any commander that has a loot effect on it, draw a card, discard a card, 
exile Madness. that card from your graveyard, play that card yep. this turn. There's a lot of versatility and playability on this uncommon because of the fact that looting exists, all of the cycling that exists, madness exists. There yep. are good cards in all three of those categories. Plus all of more. the new channel lands. That all we've of the been new channel about. lands. Exactly. Yep. You play that when you use the channel ability, you discard the card, and then you can play it if it's your turn. You can still play that land on that turn as your land for turn. This card to me has a lot of hidden versatility and this seems like the kind of thing that we're going to see broken in the next couple of weeks yeah this is a really interesting card thankfully it's on a creature because the ability is very powerful um yeah definitely something to look out for and i really do like hunting through these sets for these uh kind of like uncommon sleepers really that are just you know nobody's really thinking about these right now i'm sure that some people are but yeah it's a really fun card and definitely a card that's going to fit well in like a Brawlin and Shabraz build or anything like that that you're going to want to run it in. Next right. we have Invigorating Hot Spring. And this is one green, one red, one other for another enchantment here. And bear with me. Invigorating Hot Spring enters the battlefield with four 1-1 one, one counters on it. Modified creatures you control have haste. That means creatures that have auras, equipment, uh, uh, equipped to them, or counters. Those are all modifications. So all of that is going to have haste. And then remove a 1-1 counter from Invigorating Hot Spring. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. So I like mostly the static ability on this. Like the four counters are nice. That's a little bit of added bonus. But I really do like that this is kind of like in a way like a Rhythm of, of the Wild kind of variant. I like this card. Very interesting. Yeah, giving all of your stuff that's got equipment on it or R's on it, or counters on it. Haste, very positive. Two, that you also have four creatures, basically, that you can give haste as an activated ability off of Invigorating Hot Spring. Little budget, hasty, or as an equipment's deck, plus one, plus one counters deck. This is definitely a card that would shine in that deck. Plus, it's got a monkey chilling in a hot bath. Can't right. complain about that art, bro. Secluded Courtyard. This is the type of card that, until it gets a reprint, is going to start creeping up into that four five dollar range don't ever think it'll be a ten dollar card but this will command a price until it's reprinted this will be one of your pull uncommons because spend the mana to cast a creature spell of the chosen type when it came into play or activate an ability or creature card of the chosen type this is the kind of card that any tribal deck wants and all tribal decks will want it equally meaning jake i think they're going to need to reprint this one pretty quick because cards that are like this have commanded solid prices for uncommons, especially until they got reprinted in a significant way. I think Unclaimed Territory is kind of a similar card. It's just really good tribal support. Budget, nice budget tribal support. You know, I think that the regular variant of the card will be, you know, a few dollars, but I would expect the foils of, of cards like these to creep up, um, especially as EDH players like to pimp out their decks. This is a really fun card, and again, you know, it doesn't enter the battlefield tapped. Love that. That's, I mean, that's the key here, right? Is that we're getting that generic mana, and then we're getting perfect fixing for our tribe. So yeah, very, very good card there at Uncommon. Uh, now, this card I actually played in pre-release, and it's, it's very strong. For one green and two other, you're getting an enchantment. This is a Saga. And on the first... Um, uh, lore counter you're getting a 1-1 one, one green human monk creature token with tap add green and on the second lore counter we're putting 1-1 one, one counter on each of up to two target creatures so we're going to be able to get some counters going build the team and then as we get to the third lore counter we're going to flip this we're going to exile it so keep in mind that anything that flips into exile and then re-enters the battlefield is going to have summoning sickness so these cards specifically need to have haste if they're going to swing this does not have haste but it becomes an insane mana dump. It makes anything that you cast just the ability to just grow it super huge right out the gate. So flying 2-2, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X when you do put X 1-1 one, one counters on that creature. So if you're playing a 2-2 two, two for 2, you have 8 mana left over. Just dump all that extra mana into it. Make it an 8-8, eight, eight, for example. As long as you control five or more modified creatures, Remnant of the Rising Star gets plus five, plus five, and has trample. That is pretty fun. 
but the static ability on this creature is just absolutely nuts. So you're getting a monk that has tap, you get to grow your team, and then you get to have this creature that is an absolute, in my opinion, must be answered, all for a three mana investment. It seems pretty good. Yeah, I love that having any extra mana on top of any creatures you cast after this, or are entering the battlefield, really, if you can blink them somehow, you can just dump in a plus one, plus one counters on it. Absolutely, I'm a big fan of that. We're into the mythics now, if you can tell. That was a lot of effects on one card. That's right. We're out of the sleepers and into our choices for slappers. Cloudstow Kieran's up next. It's a three mana, three, two equipment Kieran. These are these reconfigures, kind of like living weapons. We covered this in our budget commander cards that we did as the set was spoiling for some of the pickups that we thought were good there. And we really like these living weapons or reconfigures because they are creatures that then become equipment, basically. Equip creature has flying and you can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. I mean, this is platinum, platinum angel, except on a low to the ground creature that can get through as a flyer if it wants to, or it can equip to five and give a huge creature flying and make you unable to lose. Yeah, it's just one of those pesky cards that can get in the way of, you know, closing out the game, right? This card has to be answered or whatever's wearing it has to be answered. So it's a fun card. It's pesky. I, I think that it's a totally, totally the kind of card that commander players are going to target yeah. if they uh, want to have kind of like a card that's like a head turner. And what's also interesting about this card is it has this powerful effect and it's super cheap. It's like very, very inexpensive right now. It's like a dollar card. Yeah, for sure. To be clear, you don't have to kill Kieran itself as a creature to be able to lose the game or win the game. However, it does have to be attached to have that to have that effect. Right. But what Jake is referring to is killing it so that you can't equip it anymore, basically. And just yeah, essentially, keep yourself I'm, I'm alive. saying that. Yeah, from the perspective of you need to destroy this as an equipment so right. that it can't even be reconfigured onto something. Like exactly. we just need this card off the table. Yeah, I think that this is a really fun EDH card that's going to fly under a lot of people's radars. Here's one, Jake, that's not going to fly in, under anybody's radar, and that's the Reality Chip. Yeah, this card was an easy inclusion in this list. One blue, one other for a 04. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. Meh, whatever. As long as the Reality Chip is attached to a creature, meaning, for the sake of this, equipped, you may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. So when this is equipped to something, make sure you aren't playing lands from the hand. Make sure you're checking the top of the library first. Play the lands off there cast spells this is just velocity baby this card is just good it has like oracle of moldia vibes going on it's just like gonna dig you so deep into your deck it's just value it's value yeah. just attach it to whatever and uh go ham off the top of the library it's on the list of slappers and sleepers this is definitely firmly in the slapper category nobody thinks that this is a bad card and Honestly, I'm excited to play this card. I think that people are really going to enjoy playing with it and seeing it on the battlefield, playing against it. Jake, here's an ironically titled card, Farewell. Choose one or more. Exile all artifacts, exile all creatures, exile all enchantments, or exile all graveyards. The fact that all graveyards is included on this, I think is what makes me like it so much. This is what we talk about in EDH, you know, and this is a casual card in my opinion, you know, six mana. Sure. I think that it's some like, semi-competitive decks might want this you know it's just really good versatility if the board is super out of control nuke it all yeah if you just need to go for one of these then great you know if you want to protect your artifacts but everybody else has crazy enchantments exile all enchantments and the fact that it does say exile on each of these is absolutely huge nothing's going to the yard after this very yeah. strong spell the power is in your hands with this card, and I really do think that people are going to start running that pretty quickly. Jake, pivoting back before we end this, two uncommons. We got through some mythics and rares that we like that probably nobody else is talking about a ton anyway. Roadside Reliquary is one of those uh, uncommon lands, Jake, that it gives us a little pause when we see it for the first time. Sack it, draw a Dude. card. I mean, this is maybe draw two. If you've got a treasure token and an enchantment, I mean, do you uh, like seems oh, pretty easy to turn on, right? Right. Yeah. I really, like the I bottom really do line think... of this card is it's a generic, a generic mana land that for two and tap, you're going to be able to most likely draw a card off it. 
But right. there's the upside that if it's in the right shell, you will most likely be drawing two. So a two and a and a two mana investment on the EOT to just sacrifice this to draw two cards, that could be the little bit of extra nudge that you need at the end of the game to just get there. Being able to put this on a land, these are like the kind of foils that I would target right now. Just honestly, 100%. like these being like a, around a dollar, dollar fifty. I think this is going to be a very, very attractive. And again, no ETB tapped on this. This is ready to go right out the gate. So, well, we are super excited about Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I am going to be opening a set box. I might do it on the channel. Who knows? We haven't even talked about it. I'm springing this on Joel right now. Joel, what do you like about this set? What do you have left to say at the end of this video? I am excited to get my hands on new commander cards. That is always what I'm excited to do build some of these sleeper commanders, play with some of these uncommons, prove that you don't have to spend a bazillion dollars to have a fun and competitive MTG commander deck. Speaking of MTG commander decks, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching it. We know that there's a lot of videos on YouTube and that you have a choice of what you watch. We appreciate you still being here. If you're still here, you probably like commander. We have a commander league that we run that has prizes through our Patreon. Join at any level on our Patreon, go jump into our Discord, ask around, get involved, play some commander for some prizes over spell table. It's a proxy friendly league. We have, we have, we started with pre-cons. We keep it budget. It's a good time. Go check out our Discord. Hit subscribe. That's all. What else you got? Just go in the description and read stuff. Yeah. And if you can't read, teach yourself. We will see you on the flippity.